Hello friends, welcome to Venkana English Guru, my friends. We are actually talking about the neoclassical period, I think, uh, neoclassical period, where we are actually talking about writers. As I previously mentioned, as a part of this neoclassical period, where we are going to talk about six to seven important writers and where I spoke about John Milton at the beginning. And yesterday we discussed John Dryden and Dr. Johnson or Samuel Johnson. In this video, I'm going to talk about two important writers. I'm giving you some basic knowledge, my friends. One is Alexander Pope and second one is Jonathan Swift. Two important writers where we are going to talk about and short summaries of the important works of these writers. That's it. And today we'll be talking about two writers, Jonathan Swift and uh, uh, Alexander Pope. And tomorrow we'll be talking about William Blake and Oliver Goldsmith. Okay. And by that, we will conclude the discussion with regard to neoclassism or neoclassical period. And, uh, and, and maybe I may also have a kind of small kind of quiz on the period. And we'll talk about romanticism from Monday. Okay. So now friends, you can observe Jonathan Swift, 1667 and 1745. And once we think about Jonathan Swift, 30 November 1667 and 1745, 1744 death of Alexander Pope and next year and the death of Jonathan Swift, the greatest satirists, ironical writers. So he was actually an Anglo-Irish writer. This is very important. Jonathan Swift, Edmund Spencer, Oliver Goldsmith. Okay. All these were Irish writers. Remember, you will get away to who of the following is not an Irish writer. Who of the following is dash an Irish writer. You need to know. So, an Anglo-Irish satirist. Satirist, where he wrote a lot of satires. Satire refers to a type of literature where the writer exposes false and fibles of an institution. False and fibles of a society false and fibles of a traditional or uh, institution. Next. And he was a, a popular essayist, a pamphleteer. And first, first for the Vigs, see, because, and where we discussed with regard to the history of restoration period, where I told you, two political parties were established, Vigs and Tories. And he was first associated with the Vigs. And later, he became a part of Tory. So Vigs, Protestants, Tory, and uh, Catholics, Anglican and uh, cleric. Swift is remembered for popular works, A Tale of a Tub, very, 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 very important. A Tale of a Tub, which is also written by Ben Johnson. I remember this. A Tale of a Tub is actually composed by two writers, Ben Johnson, Alexander Pope. Confuse the title. Next, an argument against abolishing Christianity and Gulliver's Travels, a very wonderful, popular and picaresque novel. Okay, novel of incident and modest proposal. Several times these bits were asked. And Gulliver's Travels and modest proposal. Modest proposal, a very popular political satire on the English politics of the time. Okay, some important concepts about the writer is regarded as the foremost prose satirists. This is very important. And he is a popular satirist. Prose satirists in English language is is less well known for his poetry, but very less. And we can talk about uh, with regard to poetry. And and he's can, and he used a lot. He wrote a lot of literature by using a number of pseudonyms, pen names, and some of them: Lemuel Gulliver, Isaac Bickerstaff, Mister M. B. Draper. These are very very important. These are the important names where Gulliver's and where Jonathan Swift used to write a lot of literature. So next, so remember Lemuel Gulliver, Isaac Bickerstaff and Mr. M.B. Draper. He was a master of two styles of satire and Horatian and juvenile satires. Horace, he was a popular satirist and the classical writers and the way he used and the literature, he was the popular imitator of Horace and his styles. So that's why, and he followed two important styles of writing satires. One is Horatian and second is Juvenile. And his deadpan, ironic writing, style particularly in a modest proposal and has led to such satire being subsequently termed Septian. So, 
the essay, the political treatise, the political satire, a modest proposal and created a different name and uh, that as the greatest satirists during the neoclassical period. Okay, remember my friends. Next, uh, and when we talk about the short summary of this, a modest proposal, what is this? And the, it has a very lengthy title. A modest proposal for preventing the children of poor people from being and burden to their parents or country and for making them beneficial to the public. This is the com complete title. So by reading the full title, you can guess what could be the theme of this. So a modest proposal for preventing the children of poor people from being burdened to their parents or country and for making them beneficial to the public. So, and maybe one way or the other, it's all about a satire on the Brit British government about the protection of children, protection of the poor people, commonly referred simply a modest proposal. So it's a proposal that is made to the government where, and he made a lot of uh, suggestions to the, and next it's a juvenile satire, essay written and published anonymously by Jonathan Swift in 1729. The essay suggests that an improvised Irish might ease their economic troubles by selling their children as food to rich gentlemen and ladies. So that there was a tradition during 1730s and where we uh, we've been talking about since 2012 or 13 or 14 and the issue of Bridget, Brexit, where you, where you might have heard about where Scottish people they wanted and away from the British. But but you know what actually happened politically. Same thing happened in Ireland for a long time since beginning from 1700, beginning until 19th century, till the beginning of 20th century, where Irish people wanted and to be away from the UK. But you see the politics. So this essay and where it talks about the problems of children and problems of the poor and the poor people where and they had to sell their kids uh, to the rich people for money and food. And it's a satire on them. This satirical hyperbole and mocked heartless attitudes towards the poor and, and predominantly Irish Catholic, that is, and Papist as well as the British policy towards the Irish in general. That's what it's a satire. So where we'll be talking about something like, it's a satire on the British Catholicism. It's a satire on the British politics. It's a satire on the Irish Catholicism where the uh, British Irish, where it was not able to take care of the Irish Catholics. That is what the comedy, because since he was from Ireland, since he was from Dublin, where, and he wrote this to make comment on the plight and to make comment on the British government and, and which was not taking care of the poor people of Irish and who started selling their kids for at food and money. Next, you can see Gulliver's Travels, another important. This is a popular novel that is composed by Jonathan Swift, and this featured several uh, examinations, several examinations in India, and it also becomes a part of several textbooks at the school level or 10 plus 2 or, or intermediate or uh, graduation level. And you might have read about this. So you can see Gulliver's Travels and travels into several remote nations of the world. See the full title. Gulliver's Travels or Travels into Several Remote Nations of the World. It is also satire, political satire. It is also political. It's allegorical novel, political novel. It's a historical novel. It's a, uh, I can say it's a picaresque novel. So it's a picaresque novel. It's a political novel. It's a historical novel. So it's a novel of incident. There are plenty of things that you can attribute. So this is composed in four parts. Several times this bit was asked. How many parts are there in the Gulliver's Travels? Next by Lemuel Gulliver, first as a surgeon and then captain of several ships. Remember. Next is a 1726 prose satire by it's a prose satire, very, 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 very important, my friends. And published in 1726. Uh, it's a prose satirical novel. Satirical novel, you can see where it actually makes comments, comment on the politics of England, politics of English and by Irish writer and clergyman General Swift and satirizing both human nature and travelers 
So it also makes comment on the human nature of the people at the time. So how and how rude we and we would be, and when the power is in our hands. So you can think of how and this you can observe by looking at a number of political leaders. Next, what they actually talk about before they become leaders, but after becoming becoming leaders and what they do actually. That's what uh, this is actually a comment on human nature. Next. It's a Swift's best-known full-length work and a classic of English literature. That's what I've been talking about. One of the most important Picaresque novels during the early stages of English literature. Swift claimed he wrote Gulliver Travels to vex the world rather than divert it. Okay, to vex the world, to disturb the world, not to divert the world. The English dramatist John Gay remarked it is universal read from the cabinet council to the nursery. Gulliver Travels is listed as satirical masterpiece of English literature. Maybe today, yeah, and you might have read maybe the current, recent current affairs with regard to English literature. And this features and one of the popular novels and out of 100 you can see. So what are the four important parts? This is very important, my friends. Several times they will ask you, what is the correct chronological order of the four parts? How many parts? net net bit and what what is the chronological order of these parts so as i told you a couple of times lblh lblh this is very important my friends lblh why is to lilliputians so l refers to lilliputians why is to brooding necks second one and why is to laputans and balneburbis lugnags and glumdal grip and japan so you should also remember and wise to the land of humanims. That's what Lilliputians, Brodignacs, Laputans, humanims. And the title of third will be somewhat lengthy. Remember this. A wise to Laputans, Balibarbi, Lagnax, and Glamda Drip and Japan. Remember this. So four important parts. So how can you remember LBLH? So as I told you previously, I kept this quote maybe more than 10 or 12 years ago. And uh, and in Hyderabad, you see that there was a popular cricket stadium, LB Stadium, where I watched a popular cricket match between India versus New Zealand, India versus uh, Pakistan. And uh, during my school days, by spending 25 rupees a ticket at the time, and where I watched then, and I remember this quote, Lalwal Stadium, it's a popular cricket stadium we used to have, but now it's for only political moments. So, Lal Bodhi Stadium, there was a ladies' hostel. Think like that and you will get something, okay? So, these quotes are to be according to your own experience because you are going to remember. See, today I have read a wonderful article about our human memory. So, by 2030, we, most of the people, we are going to lose our memory. Remember this point because I happen to read a very wonderful small article uh, maybe I came across and that article talks about most of the human beings, most of the intellectuals today because we usually depend on cell phone and we usually depend on for many things on technology and maybe and it's a notion that in the western world people uh, they, and th there was no chance to remember certain things hence they have and chips and that were attached to their uh, the place near the where they keep the watch and where they used to have chip and that chip remains you so because people are losing their losing their memory memory part these days that's what by 2030 nearly 70 percent of the population in the world and there will be a lot of degradation of our memory power we always depend on machine remember my friends so try to try to be conscious try to be conscious try to uh, try to be because do, and uh, if you have that, and we will have the problem of amnesia very early. And in those days, people used to have amnesia, loss of memory after 60 or 70 or 80. But you can expect, because this could be a problem of, according to the article 2030, and most of the youngsters, above 30, above 20, and we are going to have this problem. That's why you can have certain codes, and which will keep you all the time updated. So, LBLH, Albu Stadium, Ladies Hostel. Like that, you can have your own quote. Okay, friends. Next, uh, highlights. So, what are the major important highlights of this book, The Gulliver's Travels? 
you see broadly the book has three major important themes the book the gulliver travels usually talks about three important themes a satire on the state of european government and of pretty differences between different religions you see okay there are a number of differences today so and it's very important this novel simply talks about makes comment on the state of european government and differences and between different religions so religion is a concept because as a student of literature having read a lot of books i learned only one thing religion is a concept which we created for uh, for uh, leading this world leading this life happily not to create any problems to the other part of the world but the problem you can see how people create tensions among other people so that's what he makes lemuel gulliver where he makes comment that religion is a concept which we have created which we have created for own our own life to lead our life and in a proper way which is the notion created by our ancestors experts but and how how you can you can see in the modern world in the 21st world in the global world how people cre- and create problems to the people of one religion create problems to the other that's why this novel is a comment on those people and this this novel is also a relevance relevance in the present world next an inquiry into whether people are inherently corrupt or whether they become corrupted wonderful point that's what it talks about when you read broding nax how people were how people whether as we need to think of the concept called i will talk about a lot when i discuss psychoanalytical theory and which is very important for us with regard to english literature with regard to the crit- criticism the ideas of sigmund freud so and uh, you can also talk about an inquiry into whether people are inherently corrupt so every human being will have some kind of corruption some kind of uh, uh, what we say and we'll have a lot of happiness by creating problems to our subordinates so this this is what another important thing an inquiry into whether people are inherently corrupt or whether they become corrupted based on the situations and people they usually some people they become corrupted and uh, based on the situation but some people are born with uh, some kind of uh, uh, notion of creating problems to others so this novel makes comment on that when you read mainly part 2 voice to broding max next a restatement of the older ancient versus modern controversy previously addressed by swift the battle of the books so ancient versus and the old one so that's what when you read voice to human names and where uh, where the central character speaks to the hearts human name and where he spends a lot of time in that particular place speaking to and number of animals you can see so today you see if you speak to there are a lot of people and today and they spend a lot of time with their pets but they don't have any time to look after their parents look after their elders maybe it's a kind of theme on them and it's a comment on them okay so this is something about with something with regard to janadas so i feel like it's enough okay next we'll be talking about some concepts on alexander pope friends the moment you think about alexander pope you need to have the idea of who is called the twickenham of 18th century alexander pope and who popularly used here here i couplet during new classical period alexander pope who translated the works who translated two popular uh, epics of homer alexander pope very 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 important my friends and is known for a number of quotations you know to help his human to forgive his divine a little learning is dangerous like he and and he makes a number of quotations you know and he was the only first important writer who composed autobiography okay an epistle to dr arbutnath the autobiographical work by alexander pope popularly featured in the history of net examination an essay on man an essay on criticism dunciard very popular works that were composed and the rape of the lock what is the theme of uh, the rape of the lock and who is the central character belinda what is the name of the pet dog of belinda shock like there are plenty of uh, repeated bits based on alexander pope when you read previous bits so i am giving you some basic knowledge about this writer and see <coughs> 
1688 and 1744 and he was a poet and satirist augustine period and one of the one of its greatest artistic exponent considered the foremost english poet of the english 18th century the greatest poet of the neoclassical literature and the greatest satirist and the greatest master of heroic couplet very 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 important most of the works that were composed by J and alexander pope were composed only in heroic couplet what is heroic couplet i told you heroic couplet refers to a stanza that is composed in two lines where every line includes 10 syllables without rhyme scheme composed in blank words ambic pentameter lines and this heroic couplet which is first introduced into english literature by which was decasyllabic couplet introduced by Chaucer. Later, it was adapted into English literature by Sir Thomas Watt and Earl of Surrey. And it was popularly used by Shakespeare and Elizabethan dramatists. Later, and uh, you, you can see John Dryden, Alexander Pope popularized it by writing an essay man, essay and criticism, Rape of the Lock, and plenty of other works. Next, after Shakespeare is second most quoted author in the oxford dictionary of quotations very 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 important after shakespeare is the second one who contributed a number of quotations to the oxford dictionary of quotations and as i told you next is best known for satirical and discursive poetry satirical poetry and he inspired many writers like jonathan's 50 william congre william which are the plenty of other writers and he was under the under he was one of the disciples of William Congreve and William Wycherley and John Dryden, and and you can see the popular works The Rape of the Lock, first two cantos, next five cantos, Dentiad, first three, next four, and Essay and Criticism, Hersey and Man, and translations of Homer's epics, two epics, Iliad and Odyssey. Very 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 important, my friends. All these are the popular works. Next, you can see. Next, what could be the short summary of uh, the Rape of the Lock? I'm not giving you the detailed one. You see, my friends, only by looking into the examination point of view. So it's a mock heroic poem. What is epic? What is mock heroic poem? What is mock epic? Mock epic refers to a long narrative. It's a long poem that is written in a grand style about a menial or trivial or insignificant or tittle tattle things. Mm -hmm insignificant irrelevant unworthy idea next uh, composed by pope and one of the most commonly cited examples of high burlesque it's a and uh, it's a comment on and sophisticated communities it's a comment on orth orthodox communities orthodox people see today you can also and and uh, if i make some any obscure comment i'm sorry and you see a lot of people they don't give priority they for example once you look at today once we observe and old uh, people and uh, for example they may, they may drop a glass may, may they may for example if, if you offer them a tea simply they drop it and uh, you can see the in-laws you can see the pay you can see their kids how they scold those people and think of but and we don't give any priority to the emotions and if we scold them but we give priority to the and uh, what the monetary aspects, the material things. We look at, we look for only the glass. We look for only the money that we actually spent for the glass and the money we actually spent for the glass of milk. But we don't give any importance to the emotions if we scold them, if we abuse them. So that's what, and in the same way today, people are like most of them are materialistic, not a kind of manly or humanistic. So this, this market packet is actually a comment on those sophisticated people you can see and uh, i ha i had the and uh, i i was so fortunate to look at many incidents but i could not share with you and since it is uh, becomes a kind of public kind of comments that's what i am not going to give you a number of examples you can see people people give a lot of showers to animals their pets but they are not ready to give showers to their old parents you can look at the plight same thing during 1700 1740 and most of the sophisticated people they give a lot of importance to materialistic aspects right then for example if i ask uh, if if you ask somebody I, in these days 
can you give me a kiss which means somebody thinks about okay if i give you a kiss my lipstick may go out so i don't want to give that so people are not going to give priority for the emotions that we have towards them and they give priority for the item so what is the cost of a lipstick maybe 100 or 1000 or 10000 rupees but you you have to give priority for the emotions of the person that's what this mock epic makes comment makes fun of so this mock epic is actually a satire on the sophisticated people who do not give any importance to emotions who give a lot of importance to materialistic world materialistic world and the worldly pleasures not the spiritual pleasures of the world that's what so has alexander pope who is never married and he was not attracted to anyone and nobody accepted him since he was just four and a feet young man and he is never married no kids at all you know so so one of the most commonly cited examples it was first published anonymously and lineets miscellaneous poems and translations and first in two cantos this is very important when the rape of the lot was come come and published first only in 1712 in two cantos very very important 334 lines sometimes lines are also very important my friends so frankly speaking lines are also very important first in 1712 in two cantos a revised edition written by mr pope followed in march 1714 has five cantos canto section the major part of the poem which you can say section okay 794 lines accompanied by six engravings not required so first to two cantos 1712 and the last revised edition five cantos 1714 that's it next was written by pope to child gently the former so this is written to child to abuse the farmer family when lord peter referred to in the poem as baron so this lord peter one of his friends and figures in the poem in the name of baron cuts off a lock of arabella farmer's hair and this arabella farmer and who becomes belinda in this and arabella farmer's hair of certain fateful day such dire results and the followed so this one of his friends lord peter who cuts and a flock of hair from arabella farmer and this lord peter lord peter is actually called in the poem baron and arabella farmer belinda a leading example of mock mock epic satire it's a mock epic satire john carroll good friend of pope asked him to write a little poem about the affair in order to help heal the wounds of the two families hence pope composed this mock epic next you can see my friend the poem became a trivial story that's what trivial every mock epic the major theme is trivial insignificant a worst idea that they actually talk about it's a trivial story of the stolen lock of hair as a vehicle for making some thoroughly mature and sophisticated comments on society it's a comments it's a satire it's a comment on sophisticated society sophisticated families and human mind human kind so today also you can see if you want to make for example i say a lot of lot of things how and some of the rich people they take their pets to different hospitals and to different pedigrees but they do, they are not ready to take their parents to different hospitals so you may write a poem today and to make comment on them that's what so pope draws on on his own experience in the classics in combining epic literary conventions with his own wit and sense of values the entire poem is written in five cantos making use of the popular rhymed iambic pentameter words along with balance antithesis bathos and paranomasia paranomasia i told you what what is antithesis what is bathos what is paranomasia okay paranomasia is nothing but pun next antithesis you know so opposite of the process of using to and to opposite structures in the opposite structures or clauses in the same sentence and bathos and also a lot of because he is alexander pope is one of the major important poets who used a lot of figures of speeches and very used is used in this okay 
So, and next another important poem is Dunshot. Dunshot, very important friends. And this first edition includes three volumes and another version includes four volumes, four books. It's a landmark of mock heroic narrative poem. It's also a mock and mock narrative heroic poem by Alexander Poe, published in three different versions and different from 1728. And final one, you can have four volumes. And the poem celebrates and uh, goddess and dullness and the progress of our chosen agents. They bring decay and imbecility, tastelessness to the kingdom of Great Britain. So it's also a kind of satire on the Great Britain, on the king, on, on the government itself. Next, an SN criticism, you can see. An SN criticism and SN man. Next, you can see an SN criticism is one of the first major poems written by Pope. Friends, once it was asked, an SN criticism was actually dash. An essay poem or novel or short story. A poem. Remember this. It's a poem by Pope. It was first published in 1711. An SN criticism composed in, again, heroic couplets, as I told you. All the works that were composed by Pope only, Christopher Marlowe composed all his dramas only tragedies. In the same way, all the works of uh, Pope, Heroic Couplet, remember, written in Horatian mode of satire. It's a satire in Heroic Couplets. It's a words essay primarily concerned with how writers and critics behave in the new literary com commerce of Pope's contemporary age. So how different uh, critics behave in this. Covers a range of good criticism advice represents many of the chief literary ideals of Pope's age. And this includes popular quotations like, to err is, to err is human, to forgive is divine. Yes. Next, a little learning is always a dangerous thing. Very, very important. Fools rush in where angels fear to tread. Popular, you may also get a bit, this, this quotation is taken from an SN man. Fools rush in where angels fear to tread. A little learning is a dangerous thing. To have this human to forgive is divine. Popular dialogues given by, popular quotations, proverbs given by Pope in an essay criticism. Important, my friends. Next, and throughout the poem, Pope refers to ancient writers such as Virgil, Homer, Aristotle, Horace, Longinus, the popular critics. This is a testament of his belief that imitation of ancient is the ultimate standard of taste. This is very important. All the neoclassical writers, they believed in imitating the classics, classical writers. Same thing that he talks about in this. And Pope also says, true ease in writing comes from art, not chance, as though as those move easiest who have learned to dance. Meaning, poets are made, not born. So poets are actually created by observing the classical aspects. So if you really want to have poets are to be born, if you want to have poets like Homer or Shakespeare, they are rare. And they are usually born once in a, and once in a decade, once in a century. That is actually the opinion of Pope. So remember the dialogue, poets are not born, they are made, who made this statement to Pope. Very, very important. Next, another important uh, 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 poem that is composed by Pope is An Essay and Man. This is also a poem, not essay. Remember, An Essay and Man, it is also a poem. And what is this about? This is written to consider the nature of humanity and to justify God's ways towards humankind. Today, for example, see, I believe in religion, remember, I believe in God. Today, uh, today by 9.30, 9.40, and God mentioned that I have to take class, I have to talk about Alexander Pope, I have to talk about Jonathan Swift, that is written on my faith, and it is written on your faith that you have to listen to me. That's what you've been listening, I've been teaching, I've been talking about, yes or no? So if you really believe in faith, this is what actually written by, and maybe on the day, September 3rd, 9.30, and where, and the students, so-so students, they have to listen to the lecture that is given by so-so. And you are, you, and this day is actually created by the God. And where I have to talk about these two writers, I'm talking to you, you're being listening. This is what? A kind of spiritual kind of thought which is mentioned in this. So you can see humanity and to justify the God's ways towards humankind. 
Next, published in 1734, the poem, this is a poem, as I told you, consists of four epistles. Very, 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 very important, my friends. The first epistle surveys relationships between humans and inwards. What is the relationship between this human world? Do you really believe that there is a close connection between this body to this universe? Yes, there is a connection. You need to understand. If you understand, your life becomes and glory. Like the second discusses human as individuals, every human being as an individual. You and we will have a lot of problems. We will have a lot of problems in the world because we imitate others. So when you start imitating others and you will have problems. When you think that you are an, you are an individual, an independent individual, you are not going to have any problem according to Pope. And the third addresses the relationship between the individual and the society. Do you really find any connection between the individual and the society? Yes, there is. The fourth questions, the potential of the individual for his happiness. So, arise awake and stop not till the goal is reached. This is actually a statement made by John Milton in uh, The Pad of the Lost. And Swami Vivekananda might have read The Pad of the Lost. There is a dialogue like, arise awake or be fallen forever. Popular dialogue made by John Milton in the name of Satan. But this is renamed by uh, uh, Swami Vivekananda, arise awake and stop not till the goal is reached. This is renamed by Venkana, arise awake and stop not till you qualify net. Same thing you, which you can talk about. This is actually talks about and what is the nature of an individual. And what is the relationship between this individual to the universe, individual to the society, individual for his own happiness. What a wonderful philosophical poem that he actually composed. Read it, you will really enjoy. This is what I wanted to talk about in my discussion. And if you really like it, share our video to your friends and classmates. And try to, same thing I'll be talking about, like our video, share our video to your friends and classmates. And we'll meet tomorrow, same time. Thank you. Before you leave, like our video and share our video to your friends and friends.